Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India we are going to discuss an important cause of acute flaccid paralysis that is poliomyelitis a childhood flaccid paralysis. Acute flaccid paralysis is weakness or paralysis in any part of the body which is caused by many infectious and non-infectious etiological agents. The surveillance of acute flaccid paralysis is the most effective way of finding cases of poliomyelitis. Since 2012, no case of poliomyelitis because of wild polio virus has been reported in India and WHO has reported India to be free of poliomyelitis. However, there is always a threat of poliomyelitis due to vaccine associated and vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus and there is also threat of wild virus being imported from the neighboring countries. So, the objectives for these uh, sessions are like this. At the end of the session, you will be able to describe etiology of acute flaccid paralysis AP. Uh, you will able to enumerate enteroviruses causing acute flaccid paralysis. You will be able to describe the structure of poliovirus pathogenesis of poliovirus, clinical presentation of poliomyelitis, vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis and vaccine derived paralytic poliomyelitis, then laboratory diagnosis of poliomyelitis, AFP surveillance and prophylaxis of poliomyelitis. Now, acute flaccid paralysis is a clinical syndrome characterized by rapid onset of weakness in one or more limbs progressing to maximum severity within several days to weeks with reduced reflexes, flaccid tone and absence of upper motor neuron signs. The surveillance of acute uh, flaccid paralysis, it helps to detect paralytic poliomyelitis due to wild uh, as well as vaccine derived poliovirus transmission in population. Acute flaccid paralysis, it is caused by lesions at various levels of neuraxis. For example, lesion in spinal cord may cause ac acute transverse myelitis or anterior horn lesions may lead to flaccid paralysis uh, which may be due to infection uh, due to viruses like poliovirus. Involvement of dorsal root ganglia because of viruses like rabies virus, herpes simplex virus and cytomegalovirus. There can be lesions in neuromuscular junction which may be because of bacteria like bacterial diseases like botulism or uh, tetanus and there may be involvement of peripheral nerves uh, like Guillain-Barré syndrome and polymyositis as well as viral myositis. So, the lesions at various levels of the neuro neuraxis may cause acute flaccid paralysis. Acute flaccid paralysis is caused by infectious as well as non-infectious causes. The most important infectious causes include polioviruses, non-polio enteroviruses, other neuroviruses like herpes viruses, West Nile virus and Japanese encephalitis virus. So, these are the arboviruses which can cause acute flaccid paralysis sometimes, rabies virus and bacterial infections caused by Clostridium botulinum and Carinibacterium diphtheri. The non-infectious causes of acute flaccid paralysis, the most important is Guillain-Barré syndrome, acute transverse myelitis, peripheral neuropathy, muscle disorders and disorders of neuromuscular transmission. Now, enteroviruses are the most important cause of acute flaccid paralysis. Polioviruses which include wild poliovirus types 1, 2 and 3, vaccine associated poliomyelitis virus, 
vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus and non polio enteroviruses which include coxsackie viruses, coxsackie viruses A and B and ecoviruses and some enteroviruses like enterovirus 70 and 71 are the important enteroviruses which cause acute flaccid paralysis. These enteroviruses they belong to family Picorna viridae. Pico means small. So, these are small RNA viruses. They have single stranded RNA molecule. These are non enveloped viruses and uh, there are four important species of enteroviruses enterovirus A, B, C and D. However, the popular uh, way of classifying enteroviruses is uh, based on the biological properties. So, the enteroviruses which are involved in acute flaccid paralysis are polioviruses which are enterovirus uh, species C, coxsackie virus A which belong to enterovirus species A and C, coxsackie virus B which belong to enterovirus species B, then enteroviruses belonging to all these four species A, B, C, D and ecovirus which belong to enterovirus species B. So, ecoviruses are enteric cytopathogenic human orphan viruses are sometimes involved in causation of acute flaccid paralysis. Poliomyelitis virus is the most important uh, cause of acute uh, flaccid paralysis. Now, it is a virus which is about 27 to 30 nanometer size and it has icosahedral symmetry. The virus capsid which has icosahedral symmetry is made up of 60 subunits and each subunit has 4 proteins VP1 to VP4. VP1 is the most outermost protein and it actually gets attached to the neutralizing uh, type specific antibodies. The RNA of poliomyelitis virus, it is a single stranded positive sense RNA and uh, it is directly translated by the uh, cellular ribosomes into a poly polypeptide and then it is later on cleaved into 11 proteins which include structural as well as non-structural proteins. The poliovirus has two antigens, C antigen also known as capsid antigen. So, C antigen is associated with capsid antigen, it is also known as coreless antigen or heated antigen. The second antigen is D antigen, it is associated with whole virion and uh, this antigen is also known as native antigen. Uh, poliovirus it is uh, stable at acidic pH, so between 3 and 5 it is stable. It is also stabilized against thermal inactivation by magnesium chloride. It is not affected by lipid solvents like ether, chloroform or bile salts. However, it can be inactivated by chlorine and oxidizing agents. So, on the basis of the antigen, poliovirus is uh, classified into three types. The type 1 of poliovirus is the most common serotype and it has been responsible for most of the epidemics of poliomyelitis. Naturally occur occurring poliomyelitis at present are caused by type 1 of poliovirus. Type 2 is the most antigenic type and the natural case of poliomyelitis due to type 2 has not been reported since 1999. Type 3 is again not reported, the case has not been reported since 2013. So, at present the naturally occurring poliomyelitis cases are only because of type 1 poliomyelitis virus. Now, let us see the pathogenesis of poliomyelitis virus. The virus ent enters via fecal oral route and sometimes the infection can occur also via respiratory droplets. The virus, virus gets attached to the host cells by means of an immunoglobulin like receptor CD155. So, the attachment of viral particle to the uh, CD155 results in the conformational change in the virus particle that facilitates the entry of the virus in the uh, cell. The virus multiplies in the cells of the intestinal tract that is epithelial cells and submucosal lymphoid tissue as well as in pears, uh, pears patches and tonsils. So, there is involvement of uh, deep lymph nodes. After that the virus uh, comes in the blood 
uh, and causes primary viremia through thoracic duct. Now, in 95 percent of the cases, the infection is terminated at this stage. In some uh, cases, uh, in 5 percent of the case, there is further spread. So, virus spreads to the reticular endothelial system and causes major viremia, which results in a minor illness or abortive poliomyelitis. In a very few cases, even less than 1 percent of the cases, the virus spreads to central nervous system and involves anterior horn cells and uh, neurons causing poliomyelitis. The incubation period is about 7 to 14 days and the response of the body it can be inapparent to mild illness to severe uh, paralytic disease like poliomyelitis. So, nearly 95 percent of the cases they remain asymptomatic, 5 percent of the cases they develop mild disease and clinically presented in the form of fever, malaise, drowsiness, headache, nausea, vomiting, constipation and sore throat. In about 1 percent of the cases, there is involvement of uh, nervous system and development of non-paralytic poliomyelitis clinically characterized by the symptoms like neck stiffness, pain in back and neck. However, there is complete and rapid recovery. In less than 1 percent of the cases, there is actual paralytic poliomyelitis. So, uh, there is involvement of central nervous system and there is flaccid paralysis resulting from the lower motor neuron damage. In some cases, a progressive post poliomyelitis atrophy is observed after several years in affected muscles. So, it is nothing but a recrudescence of paralysis and muscle wasting observed several years after in affected muscles. So, paralytic poliomyelitis is an acute inflammatory damage due to infection of the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord due to polioviruses or vaccine associated polioviruses or vaccine derived poliovirus. Typically, the paralysis caused by poliomyelitis, it is a descending acute flaccid paralysis. There is no sensory involvement and, of, uh, and also the paralysis is asymmetric. So, on the basis of this clinically it can be differentiated from uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome or acute transverse myelitis. The disease progression is typically biophasic. So, initially there may be involvement of central nervous system uh, aseptic meningitis. There is uh, recovery patient becomes asymptomatic and then again there is uh, fever and uh, paralysis. So, uh, the disease progression is typically biophasic in nature. There can be involvement of spinal cord uh, or uh, bulbar involvement or bulbospinal involvement. Now, poliomyelitis because of uh, wild poliovirus has become rare in most of the countries all over the world. Though it is not reported from the developed countries and many underdeveloped countries, uh, but Cases of poliomyelitis subsequent to oral polio vaccines are uh, reported from many developed as well as underdeveloped countries. So, these cases that is oral polio vaccine associated my poliomyelitis VAPP, it is mostly associated with first dose of oral polio vaccine. Now, the oral polio vaccine virus type 3 is the most important virus which causes vaccine associated poliomyelitis followed by type 2 and type 1. The morbidity and mortality of oral polio vaccine associated poliomyelitis that is VAPP, it is same as naturally occurring poliomyelitis. It is seen in the recipient of the vaccines as well as it is seen in the contacts of the vaccine recipient. So, if the poliomyelitis occurs in a vaccine recipient, between 4 and 40 days of the receipt of the vaccine and if the virus is excreted is detected in the stool sample which is not a wild poliovirus, but a vaccine associated poliovirus then it is considered as a case of VAPP. Similarly, in a contact of vaccine recipient if there is a history of contact with the vaccine recipient for 4 to 75 days and if the virus which is not a wild type of poliovirus is isolated from the stool sample, then it is considered as a 
case of oral polio vaccine associated poliomyelitis in a contact who has received contact of a OPV recipient. Uh, the VAPP is commonly seen in less than 4 year old children. It is associated with immunodeficient persons commonly seen in immunodeficient persons receiving oral polio vaccine and it is usually seen between 7 and 20 days of vaccine administration. Another type of poliomyelitis which is associated with vaccine that is oral polio vaccine is vaccine derived poliomyelitis. Now, this is caused because of the mutation in the vaccine virus. So, uh, VDPP it is again indistinguishable from the wild poliomyelitis clinically. So, it is same as wild poliomyelitis. Most cases of vaccine derived poliomyelitis belong to Sabin or type 2 poliovirus. The strains show they are genetically different from the wild strains. So, more than one they are genetically different from the uh, vaccine strains. So, more than 1 percent divergence from the parental vaccine strain is seen. So, when the genetic difference is more than 1 percent from the vaccine strain then it is known as vaccine derived strains and the poliomyelitis cause this vaccine derived paralytic poliomyelitis. So, three categories of vaccine derived poliomyelitis has been described. One is circulating VDPV or cir cir circulating VDPP, the immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus and ambiguous vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus. So, these are the three categories of VDPV are reported. So, when vaccine derived virus is capable of person to person transmission, it is known as circulating vaccine derived polio virus. It usually causes outbreak where there is low OPV coverage and this type of virus it has been reported all over the world. The second type of uh, VDPV it is associated usually with primary immunodeficiency cases especially when there is uh, B cell immunodeficiency or combined immunodeficiency. So, it is known as IVDPV that is immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus. This infection cannot be prevented by uh, increasing OPV coverage that means uh, the OPV coverage has nothing to do with the immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus. And this virus shows more than 10 percent genetic diversity from the vaccine virus. The third type of vaccine derived polio virus is ambiguous vaccine derived polio virus. These are heterogeneous strains or isolates which are recovered from the sewage of unknown source or sometime from the isolated cases. Now, coming to the epidemiology of poliomyelitis, polio is an exclusively human disease. There is no extra human reservoir. Feces of patient or carrier is the most important source of infection to the community. Infants and young children are more susceptible than adults. So, in India more than 80 percent of the children have antibodies against polio virus. In children below 5 years of age 80 percent show antibodies to poliomyelitis virus. Now, poliomyelitis due to wild polio virus is no more reported from India. In 2014, India has been reported as polio free or polio eradicated country. However, vaccine associated and vaccine derived poliomyelitis virus cases are still reported. The only countries which show endemic poliomyelitis are now Nigeria, Afghanistan and Pakistan. So, the wild polio virus may get imported from the neighboring countries to India. Though poliomyelitis can be diagnosed on the basis of clinical manifestation for confirmation laboratory diagnosis is essential. So, the most important specimen used are feces. Uh, throat washings are also useful during the early period of the disease. Uh, very rarely the virus can be isolated or demonstrated in CSA, but not common very infrequently it can be demonstrated. 
and the autopsy specimens like brain can be used for isolation. The various modalities used for diagnosis are direct demonstration which can be done by direct electron microscopy or immuno electron microscopy. The virus can be isolated using tissue culture. The antibody detection can be done by demonstrating rising titers in paired sera which are collected at 1 to 2 weeks interval and the antibodies can be demonstrated by complement fixation or neutralization test. The most important method the commonly used nowadays is molecular method. So, real time multiplex reverse transcriptase PCR which can uh, be used for detection of wild polio virus as well as vaccine associated and vaccine derived polio myelitis virus can be done with this type of molecular assay. So, real time multiplex reverse transcriptase PCR is the most commonly used method nowadays. The virus can be isolated in a cell lines of primate origin only. So, only the cell lines which are obtained from primate uh, support the growth of virus. So, the commonly used uh, cell cultures are primary monkey kidney cells, HeLa and HEP2 cells. The virus growth can be identified by the typical cytopathic effects produced in culture. So, the typical cytopathic effects are the cells uh, they round up they become more refractile and there could be the degeneration of entire cell sheet. The second method of detection of virus growth in tissue culture is antigen detection which can be done by immunofluorescence or it can be done by neutralization with specific antisera. And thirdly the virus growth can be detected also by polymerase chain reaction. The serotypes can be identified by a neutralization test with pooled as well as with specific antisera. Now, for surveillance of poliomyelitis or for polio surveillance, uh, there is a very good system of polio surveillance systems that exist in India. Rather than doing surveillance for the only poliomyelitis cases, it is better to do surveillance for acute flaccid paralysis cases in children uh, because it encompasses all the cases of poliomyelitis. So, for polio, polio surveillance all cases of acute flaccid paralysis in children up to 15 years are picked up by the surveillance network. So, any case of flaccid paralysis in a child with a less than 15 years of age is investigated for the presence of polio virus. So, stool samples from uh, such case is tested for presence of polio virus in WHO accredited laboratories. Besides this the sewage samples they are also collected over 30 sites across the country and tested for polio virus at regular intervals. So, uh, surveillance of cases with acute flaccid paralysis is the most effective way of polio surveillance. So, that not even a single case of poliomyelitis remains undetected. Now, coming to immunoprophylaxis of poliomyelitis. Now, for poliomyelitis two types of vaccines are used one is inactivated vaccine and second is live attenuated vaccine. The inactivated vaccine also known as IPV it is formalin inactivated preparation which contains three types of polio virus which are grown in monkey kidney tissue cultures. The second is live attenuated vaccine because it is administered via administered via mouth it is known as oral polio vaccine. It is a live attenuated virus of three types which are grown in primary monkey kidney or human diploid cell cultures. The oral polio vaccine it was first developed independently by Sabin, Koprowski and Cox in 1955. The attenuated strain it is grown on primary monkey kidney or human diploid cells. It is verified that the attenuated strain is not neurovirulent by injecting in a spinal cord of monkey and it should not uh, demonstrate neurovirulence uh, uh, and also it is ensured that the virus does not regain 
its virulence and also it must be capable of establishing infection in the intestine. The various markers of uh, to verify the attenuation of the virus are available. So, these markers are phenotypic markers and genotypic markers. So, phenotypic markers are the various markers like the attenuated virus will not able to grow in presence of low bicarbonates or it is not able to grow at 40 degree centigrade and it does not also grow in monkey kidney cell line. But the most commonly used markers are the genotypic markers. So, the genes specific for the attenuated strains they are detected by PCR. Three types of vaccines are available, trivalent vaccine which contains uh, all the three serotypes. So, 3 lakh tissue culture infective dose that is TCID 50. So, 3 lakh TCID 50 of serotype 1, it contains 1 lakh of type 2 and 3 lakh TCID 50 of type 3. The bivalent vaccine contains only serotype 1 and 3 and monovalent vaccine contains any one serotype and dose is orally 2 drop, drops are given uh, per dose. Since no case of poliomyelitis due to serotype 2 has been reported since 1999, WHO recommends that as far as possible there has to be type 2 poliomyelitis virus, uh, it should ideally be removed from the oral polio vaccine so that there are no chances of more cases of vaccine derived poliomyelitis due to type 2 strains. The another type of vaccine the commonly used vaccine is inactivated polio vaccine. It was developed by Salk in 1952. For this the virus is grown in monkey kidney cell line and it is inactivated with formalin. So, each dose of IPV contains 40 units of type 1, 8 units of type 2 and 32 units of type 3. So, the full dose is 0.5 ml of this uh, or fractional dose which is given by intramuscular route or uh, the fractional dose which is given by intradermal route and which contains 0.1 ml. So, the immunization schedule for inactivated polio vaccine is fractional dose of IPV by intradermal route given at 6th and 14th week of age along with the bivalent oral polio vaccine. So, the polio vaccine immunization schedule is like this. The dose that given at birth is 0 dose. So, it is given, uh, it is a uh, bivalent oral polio vaccine. The first dose is given at the age of 6 weeks and there is one fractional dose of IPV. So, one bivalent OPV and fractional dose of IPV. The second dose is given at uh, 10 weeks of age which is oral polio vaccine. And the third dose is given at the age of 14 weeks which includes both OPV as well as a dose of intradermal dose of fractional IPV. Booster dose is given at 16 to 24 months of age with bivalent oral polio vaccine. Now, if we compare oral polio vaccine with uh, inactivated polio vaccine, so there are many advantages of oral, oral polio vaccine it gives herd immunity that it that means it gives immunity to the community also ok. So, uh, it is a it gives very good herd immunity it is very useful in epidemics. So, during epidemics it is recommended to give oral polio vaccine it gives local intestinal immunity. So, that is again very important advantage of oral polio vaccine it is cheaper as compared to inactivated polio vaccine and of course, there is ease of administration. The disadvantages of oral polio vaccine are it is not safe in immunocompromised. There are more chances of vaccine associated poliomyelitis in immunocompromised. Uh, the immunocompromised persons they excrete a vaccine virus for a very long duration. It can cause vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis as well as vaccine derived poli paralytic poliomyelitis. It is unstable and the efficiency is decreased by if there is uh, immediate breastfeeding after uh, vaccination or if baby has diarrhea. So, the efficiency is decreased in such cases and also there is interference of uh, locally present enteroviruses. So, 
the vaccine virus is not able to establish in the intestine and cannot multiply. So, these are the some important disadvantages of oral polio vaccine. For uh, inactivated polio vaccine the advantage is it is much safer it can be administrated in immunodeficient persons also. It does not cause vaccine associated or vaccine derived poliomyelitis it is stable, but the disadvantages of IPV it is it does not give herd immunity it is not useful in epidemics it, it also does not give any local immunity. So, infection will occur and it is also expensive. In order to eradicate poliomyelitis from India, the government of India started Pulse Polio Immunization Initiative or program. So, this was for the eradication of poliomyelitis. So, under this program mass immunization of children between 0 and 5 years of age is carried out with oral polio vaccine. So, all the children is respective of their immunization status whether they have received a polio vaccine under national immunization protocol they are given the two rounds of doses at interval of 4 to 6 weeks. So, this drive this program is carried out during low polio transmission uh, period which is uh, uh, during winter. So, during winter uh, that is during low polio transmission period two rounds of immunization are carried out. So, to summarize poliomyelitis is an important cause of acute flaccid paralysis in children. Poliovirus is a positive stranded RNA virus which is a non enveloped virus. It is transmitted by fecal oral route. Wild poliomyelitis is eradicated from most of the countries including India. However, most of the countries still continue to have vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis as well as vaccine derived polio paralytic poliomyelitis. So, though the rare these are the serious complications which are associated with oral polio vaccine. So, bivalent oral polio vaccine has replaced by the trivalent oral polio vaccine and inactivated polio vaccine has been introduced in national immunization protocol. Thank you.